Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. I am Shadow Productions, and in the last episode, we found out that the Princess Rube we saved from Gritzy ca uh, Caverns was actually uh, Princess Rube. And then we got dropped into Toad Town, and we need to find a way to get to Star Hill. So that's what we're doing now. Just kind of we we split apart from the Baby Brothers, and we're just moving towards uh, south towards the exit to Toad Town from Toad Town. So, ah, oh. yeah, not fighting that guy. Running away. I don't want to fight anyone in Toad Town. I just want to get through here. There's so many enemies littered about everywhere. Just need to find a way to get through here without even getting hit. It's easy with the Baby Brothers because all you have to do is drill underground. It's kind of slow, but it, you avoid any possible confrontations that way. So that's literally what I'm going to do. I'm just going to burrow underground, and I'm just going to kind of move through here completely unnoticed, possibly go into some houses and pillage them. But that's about it. Uh, so I woke up in a pretty good mood today, and today is Saturday, April 28th as I'm recording, but not as you're watching, I doubt. Unless I decide to upload, like, three episodes in one day, which would be kind of ridiculous. But, um, yeah, today is the day after my birthday. So, yesterday was my birthday. I got my license, um, and I woke up with a full bag of Doritos in my room. So, definitely no reason to be depressed on this very fine one. I was gonna get that bean... I sided against. Oh god. Had to switch away from that hammer thing. But uh, there really is no reason for me to be uh, depressed whatsoever at all right now. So I think that's it for Toad Town. I just need to get the. reunite the brothers and then we can hit that extra high block. Yeah, I think that's all we need to do right now. Now, that'll take us actually to a warp hole back to the present, because we haven't seen one of those in a while. And uh, this one actually takes us underground. Um, I don't remember if I showed off the Toad Town sewers. Uh, I might have gone there. No, I, I don't know. I, don't, I know I opened up the pipe to Toad Town sewers, but I don't know if I did anything else. But basically, I'm going to show you uh, where we can get some uh, badges for our beans. Um, yeah, I do think I ended up going here for some reason. Because when you first go here, you'll see like a cutscene of Fawful going into the pipe system or something like that. And you kind of want to follow him. But if you go into this pipe right here you can hit a bunch of blocks that will give you a hundred coins and then you gotta switch to the adult brothers and get them before they disappear but I have way too much money so I'm not even gonna bother and I don't think there's anything over here so we're just gonna turn around and here is Fawful his underground hideout at where he's taken refuge after the first game now I have fury I say to you welcome welcome to Fawful's bean and badge in this place, beans are like precious treasure milked from a famous cow made of jewels. All who come with beans leave with badges so rare they make mustaches droop with disbelief. What? The story of Fawful? Your words are not beans. I am not wanting them. You are like brainless cats that are too dumb to know they are stupid. You have curiosity. But my tail is long, so long it makes babies old and hairy lips grow gray with aging. Do you dare hear? And now you listen. I am here, merchant of badges, only sometimes with fury, but I once had fury at all times. I drizzled rage dressing on the country next door, rage dressing on a salad of evil. And then the bad men came, red and green bad men. I had the punishment. Bad punishment with hammers and jumping on my head in the overheat of my ship. I have a little fury even with my remembering. Red and green, a pair of jumping hammers in red and green who are looking like you. I have fury. Those brothers of badness, my brain aches at their overalls. I have fury and headache now. 
Fawful would be here, reigning over all and laughing at you. But no. So much fury! Stupid mustaches, hair is like the dirty tail of a horse in a barn built by a farmer who was crazy. I have come. I am waiting like an elevator. I have the commerce. I run Fawful's bean and badge, but the day comes soon when Fawful rises again, and then no baby's candy has safety. I am counting chickens before they are even eggs, before the chickens are even eggs. I will have fury! I laugh at defeat! I fight with rage. I hurt your faces. Did I have insanity? Did I have evil? I suppress the fury, but sometimes the fury has me. Red and green puts the fog of rage in my eyes and my mind goes crazy. Please, I will be fine. No worrying for Fawful. We talk of beans. Beans and badges. We begin trading. What are you wanting? <sighs> yes. Fawful is a nutcase, but he's pretty funny. And we're basically funding him by buying stuff from him, even though we're paying in beans. But if you want to, you can take a look at all these different fine badges we can buy. I don't have enough beans for any of them. But I would have if I hadn't had to use a different file. Whatever. We're just going to pretend I had enough beans to buy an ulti free badge. And then we're going to use the ones that I have through codes, I guess. I don't even know how I got them because they were there when I already started the file. So let's equip only one. I think I have like four, but I would never ever have enough beans or grind to get enough beans to get four so I'm not going to use four just one is enough for Mario if you're patient enough and get two that's ideal any more than that's a little ridiculous um, and unnecessary because the majority of the time you're gonna be playing as the adult brothers but with the ulti free badge or ulti or whatever, however it's pronounced, basically, um, you can use unlimited brother's items in battle as the brother it's equipped to. So whenever I'm playing as Mario in battle, I can literally like like when I go to choose. Oh yeah, there we go. That was that was tough. Yeah. But um, if you go to select a brother's item, there'll just be like a line next to it where it says where it would usually say how much you have. And it just means you could use as many times as you want. Luigi is completely unaffected, and he still, uh... Um... He still has, like, a, a limited... He's, his number of brothers' items is limited to the amount that you have. Um, I'm not actually sure if, uh... You need to have at least one of the brothers' item in order to be able to use it infinitely as Mario. Like, if I used up all my green shells as Luigi, I don't know if I'd be able to use them infinitely as Mario, because I wouldn't have any. I've never actually tried that out, so I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure about that. We seem to have arrived on Star Hill. Blah, 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 blah. Danger! Alert! Danger! The Cobalt Star, this Cobalt Star has become so disturbed that I am rapidly losing control of it. We must submit, summit this hill with the greatest of speed. The source of the Cobalt Star's irritation must be somewhere in the immediate vicinity. So this is Star Hill. It's the, uh, basically the second to last area of the game. Six mixed flowers. Fantastic. Um, but this whole, uh, following area is just the second to last area of the game. And now I'm going to show you the incredible might of the mixed flower. And I guess these enemies too, which I'm getting completely destroyed by. Now I have to resurrect Mario to use it. But you need to have all four brothers uh, alive and well in order to do this. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. If you just you just gotta mash the uh, button of the brother that has the fire. It's like any other fireball type move. 
and uh, you just keep on feeding it fire to help keep it lifted up. And once it gets too heavy, or once you mess up or whatever, it falls down on every enemy and does quite a lot of damage. Pretty much enough damage to kill almost every enemy in one hit, assuming you're not underleveled. So I'll show off this battle, just because I don't think I've shown off the, uh, the winged enemies yet. The, this version, anyway. I think I might have shown a different version off. I don't remember. But they do a lot of, uh, like, flying and circling around brothers and swooping down on them and stuff like that. And the black hand enemies, I think we're going to be seeing um, a lot of them, if I remember correctly. They're pretty unique. Their power depends pretty much entirely on, like, what sign they're holding up. So that's how you tell what kind of attack they're going to use, and they're pretty cool. And pretty creative enemies. Not that we're really going to be seeing much of enemies' attacks at all, because now with the mixed flower and unlimited use of them, we're pretty much going to be destroying every enemy that we meet on site. And I'm going to cut out most of these battles, just because it's the same thing over and over again. So there's not going to be much of a reason for me to show uh, those battles off. Just rush past that guy, I guess. I don't even know what kind of enemy that guy is, because I don't remember seeing any more of them later on. But I could be wrong. I haven't gotten a level up in a while, though. I don't know if that has anything to do with me using codes to not have to grind when I was making my way uh, through this save, the second save file I had, because I had to redo all of Gritzy Desert, and I wasn't grinding again. Fuck that. So I just used codes to get quickly get back to where I needed to be. But hopefully that hasn't hindered my ability to level up, because that would really suck. But so far really haven't had any enemy troubles yet. My mixed flower kills pretty much everyone in one shot, so I can't really complain. I don't know if there's anything over here. No. Ah, oh, goddammit. Should've just stuck with that door. Come on. Yeah, another one of those. That's, uh, not the last time you're gonna be seeing it, either. Well, actually, I think it's... Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. You're definitely gonna have to use the baby cakes type. The yeah, that, I think it's what it's supposed to be called. The baby cakes move to uh, climb up, and there you're gonna see more of those fans later on during one of the last puzzles in this area. I think. I don't know. That's one of like the staple puzzles in this game. Like you see that puzzle so often. Once you get to a uh, Thwomp Volcano, it's ridiculous. But, once you get over here, you want to be ready for a boss fight. So save and grab items and all that stuff. Make sure you're ready. And, now we're going to fight a pretty important boss, I guess. He's like, I guess the commander of the Shroobs? I don't know. His name is Commander Shroob, after all. Or maybe he's just one commander among many. Now, there's actually a trick to beating this guy. You can't just, like, attack him directly. <clears throat> First, you need to lure him out. And the way to lure him out is with that big bomb that those shrooms are carrying. That bomb is pretty devastating, so watch out for that. Because I believe if you don't get rid of the shrooms before their turn comes along, they'll actually throw it at you, and you have to bounce it back in a like a volley type thing, and I'm not too good at that, so probably gonna get hit if it comes down to that, if I mess this up, which I really hope I don't. Oh, come on. Alright, I'm just gonna hit this back. I think if it blows them up though, I don't, I don't know if I'll be able to lure the commander out. Not sure how that works. I think they just, yeah, they just get a new bomb from that shroob ship up there. That's great. 
died already. But anyway, the trick to getting Commander Shroob to come out is to attack the, uh, the middle, uh, yeah, the middle Shroob and then the back one. And if you kill both of them, the one in the front won't be able to support it, and just from the angle that he's holding it, the, uh, bomb will roll backwards, and it'll get the Commander to come out. And the Commander's really easy, once you get to him, um, yeah, I think he has quite a bit of HP, but, like, when it comes to actually beating him, or not, like, when it comes to his attacks, I mean, like, they're really not that bad at all. I think one of his only attacks is literally just to send other shrooms at you. He's not a particularly great fighter on his own. And once you get the mixed flower, that's pretty much, like, what you're gonna spam against bosses. That and the copy flower. And the red shell, if you're good with it. The red shell and the copy flower are honestly probably the best brothers items in the game. If you know how to use them, because you can just keep on doing damage and kill them in one hit. I think I'm actually going to start using the copy flower, because the mixed flower is great, don't get me wrong. But uh, if I could start doing good with the copy flower like I was before, I think I could pretty much rape this guy pretty soundly. I don't know, I'm going to try to grind a little bit more in like the final uh, dungeon and just in general, I guess, because it's easy once you get the mixed flower and it definitely pays off against the final boss battles because those take forever. Like if you look up the stats on uh, Mario Wiki or anywhere they have them really, it'll say like a number and then in parentheses it'll have another number and the number outside the parentheses will be the amount of HP it has I think in the American version and in the parentheses the original. Some enemies have a lot more HP in the American version than they do in the Japanese. I don't know why they had to do that. That's just not cool. But, wow, that was crazy. Damn. I hate when any when I have to like counter any attack that comes from above in any of the Mario and Luigi games because I can just never tell which brother it's gonna go for. There's just no way for me to tell. I'm sure. There is a way to tell if there's like a shadow or something, but it's just, I don't know, I just have trouble with that. Hopefully the cannonballer can kill one of the shrooms, because if that works, then I'll just save. Because the red shell really wasn't working out for me, because I'm just not good with it, especially on an emulator. The cannonballer didn't really work too well. I was hoping it might kill like one shroob in one hit, but I guess not. But I think the copy flower actually might be a better choice here. Because you can kill one shroob and then you move on right on to the next once you kill him. And if I can get the timing right, yeah, then you can get both of those guys. Yeah, I would definitely recommend the copy flower for this part. But once you start attacking the bomb, I would definitely stop. Because you need the bomb to lure the commander shroob out, and I don't know what happens if you, like, kill the bomb. It might just blow up on you, or something stupid like that, or the shroobs just get another one. Ah, oh, I haven't talked about this before, but, um... I actually played Super Mario Land and Super Mario Land 2 for the first time the other day. Because uh, in my multimedia class, I kind of got a little bored with Super Mario RPG because I encountered this glitch after you beat Jonathan Jones. It just doesn't let you play any further, which is kind of lame. It just freezes on the screen where you get the blue star. So it's like, okay, whatever. Like, I could get a save file after this, but I, I, like, I found one, but it's at level 30, and you kill everything in like one or two hits at level 30, and it's almost kind of boring. So I uh, downloaded Super Mario Land. That game fucking sucks. 
That is an awful, awful, awful game. Ugh. Like, the physics are so much worse than, like, the original Super Mario Brothers. Uh, it doesn't look that great. It's not very aesthetically appealing. Um, and Koopas explode when you jump on them. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's Super Mario Land. That game, piece of shit. Super Mario Land 2, pretty damn good. Super Mario Land 2 is actually a fine game. A lot better. Um, yeah, I, Super Mario Land 2 is vastly superior to Super Mario Land 1, and it's, honestly, like, I've heard a lot of people say it's one of their favorite Mario games, and I, I kind of see why now. That's a pretty solid game. The, uh, bunny ear power-up rapes, um, and, uh, that's all I really have to say about that. Oh, and the fireball, or whatever, yeah, I think it's a fireball power-up thing, whatever. Um, it actually works like an actual fireball. Like, in Super Mario Land 1, you get the fireball power-up, and pretty sure it looked like a cannonball, and it would also, like, hit the ground, and when it bounced, it would just move diagonally upward into space, and it would just keep going up, uh, so... Literally, it would go diagonally down to the right, and then diagonally up to the right, and you'd never see it again. So, not the best physics for a fireball. So, in simple terms, Super Mario Land 1 sucks dick. Super Mario Land 2, I highly recommend it to anyone who likes Mario games, Mario platformers, and the like. Because I am a huge fan of Mario platformers and Mario games in general, and I still had completely overlooked Super Mario Land 2. I actually own the original copy. I bought it, but then for some reason I never actually got around to playing it. Well, actually, the reason is because I would have to play it on my Game Boy Advance, and still need to find that. But, Super Mario Land 2, great game. Easy to overlook, but fantastic. And are you kidding me? Cool. Cool! I love it when that happens, yes! Couldn't have done just a little bit more damage before. No, I had to go through a whole chain of blowing up that bomb in his face and then getting to attack him again. God damn. Well, anyway, that does it for this episode. It was a little longer, I think, but um, I'm Shadow Productions. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.